My name is John Egan. I'm a farmer here in Bardestuga all my life. I started way back farming here when I was in the early 60s with my father. And I'm still here today. I never went, went old work anywhere any time in my lifetime. It was always at home on the farm. The only time I left Ireland was in 1977. I ran an international cross country race in Paris and I came forward to 250. But uh, I got several other offers, but my father said I can't be going away like that for a week that he'd give the farm over to my sister. So I just stayed home and run here around Ireland and Northern Ireland, all as far as I went in. I was running on my life, training all my life here up and down the road. I had 30 years running. And then in the end, I spent four years PRO for the Kelly County Board. And then I was PRO for Kilgarn GA for a number of years. But the main job all the time was farming. It was farming, farming all the time. There was always cows and sheep here. In my time, uh, I got I was running up in circular the year. The first year it was ran, and as a result of it, the Minister of Agriculture in Ireland, Joe Walsh, and his Spanish compatriot, Pedro Sanchez, came to visit my farm. Pedro Sanchez later became a famous man. He was over the monastery section of the European Union. But uh, I, I, as I increased the sheep numbers, I suppose I started cutting down the cow numbers. And all Glen has no cow at all. All of them are gone. sheep here. All the others farming members, the whole of the summer would be taken up to cutting the hay. You would cut an acre or a bit, three quarters of an acre, and it would save it. And it would be slow work. The whole summer at it, you would have to draw it into the shed. And then when that would be finished, you would have to go at the oats. We used to be the oats as well. And then after that, it was digging the garden. That was another thing in October. There were some people every month of the year. When did specialise in things like lambing, like nowadays at all. Maybe bring a few of them into the fields to lamb. When did they start cutting silage? When did that come in? Well, I think we cut silage for the first time in 1972. So it was a big ease. And what were they being fed before that? Hey. It was all here before that, but uh, once the signage came in, we had less work to do. There was more time for phone your own. When was the, schl- the Schladder house, the sheds built? Well, I think the, there was a cattle Schladder shed built in uh, 1987, and in 1990 there was a sheep Schladder shed built. Was there from building back then, sir? Well, there was good grants at the time for building those sheds. A lot of people did building, building sheds. We are here now in the farthest away part of the farm. And uh, to, to the east of us, the nearest place would be Gugan Baron, Ballingary. And to, we're, we're a long ways away from Kilgarvan. So people lived here around 1842. There were reported that people were living here, this house, and there's another house in a neighbouring place across the way. And uh, there's signs of ridges down here below. There's a few small fields, tiny, tiny parkings. Where they planted the potatoes, eh? They, they, yeah, and there were. I suppose the time of the famine, the potatoes all failed and I never dug them at all. That's how the ridges are still there. The houses, they were built with stone and clay between them. But they were after falling down, as you can see, there's only pieces of them after falling in. But people lived here anyway, and they survived. See, co- cold spot. They, for messages. they were near nearly to Ballingary and to Kilgarvan. What do they do for food here? What they have, cow or what would they have? I suppose they had their own. They had a cow maybe. And Two they sheep had, and they, they had, there was plenty of turf. There was plenty of bog around here. So they had fires. So they survived me. With. When I was younger, there was no fences up here. And I used to have to come here once every day to count cattle in the summer. We'd put cattle here in the summer. And I'd be sent off to count them. To the fair distance? To the good distance. We'd bring the holly and ball, which would be hooking away. Uh, just for company. Some days I used to come at all, I used to let on to my father, I'd sit down, sit down near the house and I'd come home after an hour and a half and say I was there. But I'd always come every second day anyway. Did you to ever see, count did, the cattle? Did you ever come in and the cows weren't here or missing? I did. I often came when the cows weren't here, they'd be after going away to, to, to neighbours in both sides. They could travel away a mile or two. So I'd have to search them and bring them back again. There was no offences or nothing to hold them up. And would the neighbours get cross? 
No, they wouldn't because one of the neighbours' animals come into you as well. There wouldn't be any problem that way. There's a big change here since. Just above me here, you can see all the windmills. They've been put up there in the last number of years. And there's a fine road west through the land here now. So you can travel it all. You could travel it with a jeep or travel with anything. We've got flying through it. So there's a big change since the people lived here in olden times. Down below me here, there's a tributary of the Rookti River. Uh, the Rookti River, more of it rises just behind me here and come in a brick. And uh, when we were young, we used to come here trying to catch small fish. I don't know, are there any fish in the river now, but there were a pile of fish there in olden times. You, you see carry them home to eat them? Huh? We'd carry them home in the water, with a bucket in the water and put them into streams near the house. We'd try and keep them alive. And did the population of the streams near Some us go up? Some must be dead by the time we'd go home because the water used to be gone steel and everything. There was a good few tragedies here in this farm. Uh, I think around 1960, when I was about 10 or 11 years old, my grandfather, there was a there was a pillar here to walk into, uh, across into the field, and he slipped and he fell into the river here. Slipped in? Well, he had he was after coming home from Mass on the Sunday, he had a few bottles of Guinness, and... Uh, he slipped in and he hit his head off a rock and he died a few hours later. He broke his skull. Around 1946, my uncle, Timmy, he was my, my mother's only brother. He was picking potatoes out of a pit here uh, and um, there was a cut in his hand. So that after picking the potatoes that, that evening, he went to Killarney. He cycled to Killarney to dance. And, 20 miles away? Yeah, 20 miles away. When he came home, when he came home the next day, he felt very sick. So he was cut over to Killarney to the isolation hospital, and he was dead that night from rat chance. Wheels disease. Wheels disease. They had no, they had no cure for wheels disease that time. So he died instantly. House I was brought up in. It is there a long time. The records show that this house was here in, in 1814. Ben is the eighth generation farmer here now. My father came here in 1948. He sold his farm in Blackwater, parish of Dimple Noah. And uh, he'd uh, give 800 pounds in here to my grandfather to take over the farm. And he brought a few sheep he had left with him in the house and car way back in 1948. Here is the old stall where the cows used to be tied in. They still here timber. They used to be left in here every evening and left out in the morning early to the mountain. They'd go out and sit down. I think this house used to hold 17 cows that could be tied in. We have the ones in the middle removed the, now. There was ones here in the middle as well. To make it for a store. So we used to clean out the dough out here with a pipe. We have out the, the cow dung out the door, manure, and we'd draw it out to the fields with the horse and cow to spread it instead of fertiliser. There wasn't much fertiliser that time. Maybe a few bags, I think it was Guana. I think it was in the 19, late 60s, early 70s that men who got more popular and people started having more numbers and spreading fertiliser. This was another cow shed we built, I think, in 1982. And uh, it was when we got more cows. But when we got rid of the cows, we would come back to now into lambing pins. You can see here the lambing pins. So all we put blocks up in the middle and slats here, feed box. But were these the chains cows used? Yeah. Tie around the cows. Oh, how many was in this place? You could fit uh, tin, is it? Tin cows. Where the cows used to be put in, the sort of cows. And they, when, when we got this shed built, they wasn't be left out anymore. They were inside full time. I make out they were better off when they was be left out by day, but as they went to the house, they stay in until they go out in the spring. We were now converted into a sheep house. Well, what was your first tractor? Oh, I think the first tractor I got was the 135. Messi Ferguson? Yeah. That was a way back sometime. What year? In the 70s or sometime like that. I can take roughly. 30 cows just to fit in here. And we'd fill up the the side of the chair in the front. It was easier than the old type of thing we had in the old stalls. So it made life easier, all right. Whether it made it easier for the cows or not, I don't it. There's a bar here in the gate, you'd lift it up and the cows could go in and out to their own straw bed. The cows couldn't follow them out. It was a good system. 
A lot of sheep in here, long to land. We bring, we bring the people down land, we bring them down here into these pins. So there's all these pins here now, where all the calves used to be. We just put up black wall and put a four inch pipe along it for feed. <coughs> and we, it is all straw bedded. We put straw up in the slats here to put the cattle slats because the sheep snakes would go down. So we put a lot of sheep with young lambs in here as well. So you have to go out here housing for a big number of sheep. They are lambing together. This is a good hill. It was a weary claim bit there and did a bit of work in it around 1988 under the Western package. Made a road up through it, made drains in it, and it improved it a lot. It is all green. It is a great hill now for growing grass, especially in the summer. It grows up mad in the summer. And for feeding them late into the winter? Feed them, yeah, into the, into the years, they will be fierce grass now. A lot of rushes in it there. Uh, we reclaimed it first. They came, but uh, we sprayed them, we got rid of them. So they are all gone out of it now, and that's made a big difference. Have you ever thought of retiring and staying in bed and going away on hol summer holidays? Yeah. Foolish thing I do. I keep going on until the day I drop. I hope that won't be for no few years. This is our sheep house. No, it was built in 1990. Timber slats. There's lambs inside here at the moment. They're the, the last of the lambs, the, the, the smallest. We'll give him nuts to there, put on a bit of weight. Well, we'll sell them. The most the sheep inside here, we take them out to the outside sheds then for their pins after their lambing. We've up to 100 lambing pins and you can see them here, there's a pipe going down to them to get the water. And when the lambs are born above, we bring them down to these pins for a few days. 20 acres of fields around here, and when they come out of the pins here, they're left here in the fields for a good bit. Most of the time, some of them, before they go to the mountain. Young, I can remember we used to have ducks, hens, and I think that they, they used to rear a pig or two. They'd kill a pig, I think, and I was very young, I remember them. They'd kill a pig for themselves. They'd fatten the pig. What were you also the, the, the hens, you had the eggs, and, and, and the duck eggs as well, which they were very strong. So I think we got rid of the ducks for the only time, but the hens lasted up until I'd say, around 20, we had hens up until about 20 or 30 years ago. Well, what the fox? Would the fox get him? Huh? Well, the fox, he carried the hens, yeah. And the mink? It happened for them. There was no mink until the last later. There was no mink to be had them. They only came around a uh, number of years ago. Oh, no, but they hardly saw lambs before. It was the withers, they'd be two or three in roll. They'd be sold to the butchers. There was big demand at that time for, for mutton. No, they don't talk about mutton anymore, only lamb. Was it nice, the mutton? Mutton was nice, yeah. Very nice. Nicer than lamb? Yeah. The sheep, with the withers, were about three years old. And they'd be killed at two or three years old after mutton. It must be lovely meat. Did you get any time off from your father before to play a GA or go do anything? Well, I, I played a GA, a lot of GA on the edge. But uh, I started running then, but it was mostly... Uh, I used to train for the running by night, dark usually. September, October, November, uh, January, maybe February. I'd give it up then. I often run 12 to 20 miles a night. I open the evening around in the winter, about at 6 o'clock or 5 o'clock when it gets dark. I train for running, so... I, we were training mostly in the dark. Hey, was there great money for wool back before? Well, it got very dear there. Time of the Korean War, I think. They used to put it into ships. That time, nothing would go through. The, the, the firepower they had in, it, it would stop the ships from being sank when they'd be hit. But the wool? Firepower, but they, no, that's, firepower has got, got a wear strong on those, so wool is not more good. So they used to line the ships with the, with the wool. And so, because you was in clothes and having knitwear and jumpers and now they, they don't seem to be no other man for wool anymore. In, in the 1950s when wool got mad dear, all the, the farmers with a big number of sheep, they all bought new cars. There wasn't much cars around this area, but they all bought new cars in the 1950s and some with big numbers of sheep, they bought, they bought land as well. They bought farms because they couldn't spend the money. And there was no such thing as tax and farmers or accountants or anything like that. So that's it for another video. A small bit of a history lesson from my father. And hopefully he can relate to stuff now when we're watching some of the videos. And we'll see you for the next one. What have you done, boys?
To hell with you, Joe. Why will that sound so simple? Man. Oh.